Hello and welcome to my knitting channel. My name is Celine and today I'm going to rate my old handmade knits. I was recently reorganizing my drawers and I came across some pieces that I made when I first started knitting three years ago. So I thought it'd be quite fun to look at them together. Before I jump in, I wanted to mention what I'm wearing. This is the Stockholm Sweater by Petite Knit. I actually talk about this sweater and document the process in my previous video. The first garment I've chosen is the Fern Sweater by Knitting for Olive. This took me a year and a half to complete because I took a random year long break from knitting in the middle of making this. So it was a bit of an adventure. It is a circular yoke overall lace top-down sweater with a ribbed high neck. I first stumbled upon a photo of this sweater on my Instagram and I immediately fell head over heels in love with this design. At first I actually bought the pattern in Norwegian because that's the first thing I found and I had no idea that patterns could be translated. Anyways, it was my first time knitting short rows on this sweater and I can't tell where they are, which is a good sign. I often see German short rows being classified as a quite complex technique, but I just think that the concept of it sounds harder than it actually is. So if you're a beginner, please don't be discouraged or intimidated. There are so many incredible YouTube videos that show you how to make German short rows. So once you complete them, you'll actually realize that they're not that bad and scary. That being said, I must say that this pattern only has a few short rows and I'm not sure whether that's enough to properly elevate the back of this collar. I'm saying this because when I wear it, it kind of bunches up a bit at the front and I think there is general room for improvement on how the collar sits. So going into this pattern now, I think I would definitely try to add a couple of short rows. I'm not 100% sure that would necessarily help with the fit, but I don't think it hurts to try. Something else I noticed is the major laddering happening throughout this lace pattern. As you can see, the lace alternates between this eyelet motif and this line of decreases that directs the stitches in a V formation. To make this line, you have to knit two decreases one after the other, and I just simply wasn't tightening my working yarn in between the decreases, and it formed some major laddering as a result. Although that's very evident close up, I still don't think it ruins the overall look of the sweater. I think from farther away, it looks really lovely. And truthfully, I would wear this to show off the lace. Ultimately, there are two reasons why I don't really wear the sweater anymore. And the first is the yarn choice. I use Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk in the shade 20, which is a beautiful color, but the yarn just looks a bit cheap and it looks coarse, which I don't think is a good look paired with this really dainty motif. The second reason is my bind off technique. I had never heard of Italian bind off. In fact, I discovered Italian bind offs quite late in my knitting experience. With this one, I went for a traditional knit one pass over bind off and it just gives zero stretch and makes the cuffs and waist quite uncomfortable. Other than the high neck, these are all issues that stem from my inexperience at the time, which just goes to show how intricate the art of knitting is. There's so much that goes behind it and so many elements that go hand in hand to define the fit and quality of your finished piece. I would honestly love to knit this one again because I miss wearing it. The next piece is a major statement. I call this my unicorn Michelin Man sweater. It is knitting candy. It is a museum artifact. I could stare at it all day and that's probably all I would do. I would only stare at it. I wouldn't wear it because it is so chunky. It gives me a really hard time moving around normally. This one is the Fab Sweater by Clara Eggers. It's an overall brioche top-down sweater finished off with I-cord edging. I knit this in We Are Knitters The Wool in the shade Natural and Yarnicorn. The colorful Yarnicorn shade actually reads a bit more rainbow in the designer sample, whereas my Yarnicorn is more pink with rainbow specks, I would say. But you know, that just comes down to the dye lot. As mentioned, this sweater is beautiful, but it is so heavy and big there's no way I'm successfully getting into a coat wearing this. It also doesn't do my figure many favors, which is why I call it my unicorn Michelin man sweater. This piece is another one that took me ages to finish. I was just having so much trouble picking up the sleeves and having the brioche match the body that I just gave up and left it unfinished for months and months. Then one day I built up the courage to try it again and for some miracle I managed to finish it. Considering this was my first brioche project, I think I did okay. 
although it really put me off the stitch and I have not tried it again since. I definitely regret not knitting the body longer because it kind of defeats the purpose of the sweater being so heavy and warm. It's just that my back and tummy are always exposed, so that's a bit uncomfortable. However, I've never blocked this yet, so I could try and stretch it to lengthen it. Perhaps that would make me more inclined to wear this in the house. I don't think I'd see myself wearing this outside anytime soon. This yarn is unspun, so it peels like crazy. However, the texture that it gives knitted up in this stitch is extremely scrumptious. It's so fluffy and bouncy, and the two-tone stitch is absolutely mesmerizing. I think I would frame and hang the sweater if I could. I would definitely knit this one again if my priority was the artistic satisfaction, because in that sense, it is honestly quite irresistible, for me at least. But realistically, I wouldn't make this again because it's just a really impractical garment. Fortunately, the designer has also created a lighter version of this jumper as well as a cardigan version. And those would be perfectly suitable and comfortable for everyday wear. This one is just more of a statement, a one-off, special occasion, cute, editorial moment. Next up is my Aosta sweater by The Knit Pearl Girl, Knit In Drops Air in the shade 01. You can definitely tell that I was fixated on this white blush pink color scheme because that's all I was knitting in. This one is a simple top-down raglan sweater knit in Andalusian stitch. It was also my first time trying a folded collar. This is such a great sweater for beginners. The pattern is very simple and perfectly explains how to incorporate a stitch pattern into the sweater construction. I love how this fits, but once again, I just didn't use great yarn. Only with a little wear, this yarn lost its structure and became quite flimsy. The collar has also stretched out loads and the overall look of the yarn is just not very nice. I think this yarn just didn't make my tension look very good and even and it didn't improve with blocking at all. In fact, the only thing that blocking did was stretch this garment. I was very careful when I washed this, but it still stretched more than I asked it to. Maybe it's because it's alpaca and that's just naturally a softer fiber. Maybe I should have held it with something else to give it more structure, but still that was a bit of a disappointing moment for me. I also did a terrible job at closing this hole under the arm. In fact, I probably didn't do anything about it. There's also a hole on the raglan here. Also, I don't know how this happened, but it is stained red on the collar. I wonder if it's my red hair dye from my Ariana Grande days. I also modified the ribbing on the body. I knitted it double the length I wanted it, and then I folded back and then sewed it on. And you can see I didn't do a good job of that as well because the ribbing doesn't go straight. It just goes down diagonally. Also, the bit that I sewed is absolutely not stretchy. Oh my goodness. I didn't even weave in the ends. Well, that's embarrassing. But this is a good example of a perfectly great pattern executed a bit poorly. Unfortunately, I just don't reach out for the sweater anymore. And I think it's a shame, especially because I have no other sweater in this color. Speaking of color, I actually have quite a lot of avocado skins and avocado pits in case I ever wanted to dye some yarn. I wonder if I should use it to dye this sweater and perhaps it would bring it back to life, giving it another color it would cover up the red stain, that's for sure. I just feel like I've not got much to lose with this sweater, so perhaps it is a good idea to try and dye it. I'll give it a think. Finally, I thought I would show you my very first knitting project ever. It is this long fro that I use as a shawl sometimes, or a lap blanket, or a leg blanket. I knit this on straight needles, guys. I just cast on like 60 stitches and just knit in garter stitch until I ran out of yarn. And I think this was like six skeins. Obviously I wasn't knitting from any pattern, but my intention was to just work on my tension and just practice creating even stitches. And I think that was really great for me. I really didn't want my first sweater to be completely uneven because I had never practiced my tension. So I'm quite happy that I went for a piece like this before that. That's generally a recommendation that I give to new knitters is to knit something flat like this, just so that you have the chance to practice your tension without having to think about anything else. The only problem with a project like this is that it's very monotonous and it can get quite boring. I think it just depends how you're feeling as a beginner. Some people may be more keen to immediately explore different constructions, whereas others are just more interested in 
perfecting the look of their tension. In any case, I love this blanket. It's been sitting on my sofa for all these years and I use it all the time. And it's just a really nice reminder of where I started out as a new knitter. And those are all the old knits I'll be looking at today. It was so much fun to pick them back up and reflect on them. Thank you so much for sticking till the end and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.